In this video, I will be teaching you how to solve the Pearson correlation coefficient. So let's say for example, we have this data and uh, this is a data about the age in years and the sleep duration in hours. So we want to, let's say we want to find if there is a relationship between the age and the sleep duration. That means uh, if our age increases, uh, is our sleep duration also increases or decreases? Or it does it affect at all with each other? So the age and sleep duration has no relationship. So that's what we want to know. And we're going to use, we're going to solve, solve it using the Pearson correlation coefficient. So the complete name of that is Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient. And the short test is just simply Pearson's R. And so how are we going to, to solve it? So we're going to start with uh, the, the column X. So what's in X? So we're going to put the data of age. That's 10, 22, 15. 36, 42, and 50. Then for the Y, so the sleep duration, the 8, 6, 6, 5, 4, and 7. So you might wonder why is age the X and the y, why is the sleep duration the Y? So I just prefer to do that. But you can interchange them. So it's still going to be the same result. So don't get bothered which one is x and which one is y because anyway it's going to be the same result even if you interchange so the next column that you needed is the the x y or the product of x and y so that means we're going to multiply the x and y variables and so let's multiply we have 10 times 8 is 80 22 times 6 132 15 times 6 is 90, 36 times 5 is 180, 42 times 4 is 168, and 50 times 7 is 350. After this column, we're going to add another column. So it will be the square of x. So we're going to multiply every x by itself. So we have 10 times 10 is 100. Or 10 squared is 100, 22 squared is 484, 15 squared is 225, 36 squared is 1296, 42 squared is 1764, and 50 squared is 2500. Then we're going to do the same to the y. So we're going to square the y. So square of y is 8 squared, 64, 6 squared is 36, same as the, uh, the, uh, the next one, 5 squared is 25, 4 squared is 16, and 7 squared is 49. So as you can see, the numbers in x and y are not arranged in order because you should not change it in order. The 10 must be paired with 8 because that is one person that's different person for each row so this person with an age 10 years old is having a sleep duration of eight eight hours so if you're gonna interchange it with the others then the data will be affected and the result will be affected so do not rearrange them so just put them according to what is how it is arranged in the given so next is we're going to get the sum of x. So the sigma symbol there means sum or summation. That means we're going to get the total of the x variable. So we're going to add 10, 22, 15, 36, 42, and 50. So we'll add it. It's going to be a sum of 175. Then we'll do the same to the y, get the sum of y. So we'll add all numbers in the y column. So the sum will be 36. And then we're going to get the sum of the xy 
for the product of x and y so that's the summation of x y which is a total of exactly 1000 then we'll get the sum of square of x so we're gonna add all this in this column of course you're gonna use the calculator so 6369 then the sum of the square of y so add all the values in the column of square of y you'll have a, a total of 226 and so after this we are going now to use the formula for the Pearson's R where uh, it is like this so you got to denote it with R R equals um, the n times sum of x y n stands for the number of participants in this case there are six so n stands for the number of rows in other words minus the sum of x times the sum of y so over the square root of uh, n times the sum of x squared minus the square of sum of x they're different sum of x squared is different that is the 6369 and the square of sum of x is also different that means it's the square of 175 so this will be multiplied to the n times the sum of y squared minus the square of sum of y so this is kind of hard to remember although there are some other uh, derivations of this formula which is easier to remember but the uh, problem with those formulas is it takes a, a lot of columns to add and it, you need to get also the mean and of the x and y which is takes a longer solution than you need to construct the tables and like this it's only five columns that you need it but it's just that it's gonna be harder to remember the formula but at least it's gonna be shorter so let us substitute now we have the n times sum of x y so six because this, there are six rows uh, times the sum of x y which is 1000 minus sum of x and the sum of y so sum of x is 175 sum of y is 36 over the square root of so we have n is 6 and the sum of x squared is 6369 so minus the square of sum of x so it's going to be square of 175 times the n or 6 times the square of y squared so that's 226 minus the square of sum of y sum of y is 36 so the square of 36 so equals so we're gonna multiply 6 times 1000 is 6000 minus 175 times 36 that is 6300 so all over the square root of uh, 6 thousand uh, 6 times 6369 will be 38214 minus square of 175 we have 30,625 so times the product of 6 and 226 1,356 minus the square of 36 which is 1,296 then let's continue so get the difference of 6,000 and 6,300 so it's gonna be negative negative 300 and then square root of so we're gonna get the difference of these two pairs 38,214 minus 30,625 which will be 7,589 and then we'll get difference of 1,356 and 1,296 so the difference is 60 so we're gonna erase everything to have some space to continue to solve So let's copy the, the last solution and then let's continue. So we're going to get the 
product inside the radical sign. So let's copy it first, negative 300. So the square root of, so the product will be 40, uh, 455,340. And then we'll get this square root. So copy negative 300. So as you can see, I used the approximately equal to, because the square root of 455,000, it's going to be a long uh, and irrational number. So we will just round it off. So that's why we use approximately equal to. So it will be around 674.79. So I round it off to two decimal places. And then uh, we're going to divide this. So the R now will be approximately equal to, because we rounded up, negative 0 0.44. Now what, what does it mean by this? So let's, let's look at the table to interpret this R. So if R is 0, exactly 0, there's no correlation. If R is around 0 0.01 to 0 0.19, it's very weak correlation. If it's 0 0.2 to 0 0.39, it's weak correlation. If it's 0 0.4 to 0 0.59, it's moderately strong correlation. If it's 0 0.6 to 0 0.79, it's going to be strong correlation. If it's 0 0.8 to 0 0.99, it's very strong correlation. And if it's 1, then it's going to be a perfect correlation. So that's the interpretation. And depending on the a result if it's positive or negative and so here it is 0 0.44 so it lies on the moderately strong correlation so this is a moderately strong correlation a relationship between the age and the, and the sleep duration so it's negative so it means it's negative moderately strong correlation so what does it mean by that so if uh, as we, our age increases, then there's going to be a slight uh, decrease. So it's just slight because it's just moderate. It's so a slight decrease of the sleep duration. So it is expected that as, we, as our age increases, then it's, it is expected that there will be a slight uh, decreasing of the duration. We, we don't tend to sleep more as our age increases. But of course, we, that is just a fictitious data that I have made. So, that just for the sake of example. Okay, so I hope you will understand that this, this result is not uh, reliable because this, that was just a, a fictitious data. So, that's it. That's how you solve and how you interpret Pearson's R. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have learned from this video. Please support my channel by pressing the subscribe button and also write the math topics you want to learn in the comment section.